जय श्री राधे सब वैष्णव के जय श्री कृष्ण वार्ता नंबर थ्री इन टू फाइव टू टुडे इज डे नाइनटीन ऑफ द रीडिंग्स वेर कमेंसिंग विद पार्ट इलेवन वन इज चाचा जी रिक्वेस्टेड श्री गोसाई जी टू स्टे इन गोकुल सेंग दट ही हिमसेल्फ वुड गो ट्रेवलिंग पार्ट ट्वेल्व Once Sri Gosaiji went from Gokul to Sri Nathadwara or Jetipura to deliver some supplies for Sri Naji when he was on the banks of Sri Yamnaji it was evening time and there was no boat available to cross over Chaturji thought to himself tomorrow is the festival these preparations must be ready 2 hours before dawn and they can be made ready in the night itself Sri Nathadwara is 20 miles away so how will we be able to reach there in time He said to his accompanying Vaishnava walk behind me and place your feet wherever I place mine Chaturji walked ahead, chanting the Lord's name, and stepped into Sri Yamnaji. The Vaishnava carefully put his feet into the same place as Chaturji. He did this for some distance, but then he thought to himself, "Why do I really need to put my foot where he had placed his? I will also chant the Lord's name and carry on on my own, in my own way." He then carried on, placing his feet separately. He soon began to sink into Sri Yamnaji. He called out. Hari Babaji said to him. I told you to put your feet where I had already stepped. Why did you put them somewhere else? The Vaishnava told Chaturji the reason. Chaturji, I thought to myself that I would also proceed forward whilst chanting the name of the Lord and putting my feet in a different place. Chaturji said, "I was chanting the name of the Lord, and the Lord listened. Today he did not hear your chanting." Chaturji held the hand of the Vaishnava and took him across to the other side. He thus demonstrated to the Vaishnava the glory of the holy name. Hari Vamsi arrived in Sri Nathadwara. He paid his humble respects to Sri Gosaiji. Having deposited the supplies in the store, he went home and slept. The Vaishnava who had accompanied him came to Sri Gosaiji and told him the whole story. He said, "O oh, Maharaj, Chaturji told me that when he took the Lord's name, then he listened, but that when I did, he did not. Why is this?" Sri Gosaiji told him, "The Lord has to be has to have accepted a soul's remembrance and savor before they can become solid, and until they become." fix they will not render the perfect reward chaturji has attained this state in his remembrance of the lord's name and therefore the glory of the eight syllable prayer remains reigns with him yours has not yet reached such maturity therefore one needs to keep the company of the lord's accomplished vaishnavas the vaishnava then implored shri gosaiji this eight syllable mantra is solidly established in chaturji's heart so how can i recognize this shri gosaiji told him go to chaturji's home There you will see that Hari Vamsi is sleeping, but that while he does, the sound of the eight syllable mantra is oozing out of his every hair follicle. When he saw this, the Vaishnava's doubts were all dissolved. Bhav Prakash, a doubt may arise in this story. In the path of grace, it is said that when the Lord selects a soul, then they come to His shelter. When the soul thus takes refuge in the Lord, He accepts their remembrance and seva. So why is it stated here, when the Lord accepts you? only then can your seva sumiran be firm the answer given here is that when the lord graces the soul only then with that soul surrender to the lord however until the love in that embodied soul's heart for the lord does not become perm- unshakable and permanent their spiritual practices will not bear fruit therefore an embodied soul must constantly recall their love for the lord and always recite the eight syllable mantra they should keep the company of great vaishnavas and remain always ready to serve the lord in this way their heart's love will become solidly fixed and when they take the lord's name or serve the lord with such focused love then these bring immediate rewards this is the principle taught through the incident part 13 once some vaishnavas from gujarat approached hari vamsi saying we are very wrapped up in our worldly activities for this reason we are not able to go to gokul so how may we have the sight of shri gokul nanji chashi ji went to rajnagar and from there wrote a letter to shri gokul nanji and sent one man to deliver it to him at home it read o maharaj if you do not go to dwarka ji then no one from vishi varabachari ji's lineage will travel to dwarka ji Therefore, please at least once do visit Dwarka Puri. The appointed man took this letter and left. He arrived in Gokul some days later and presented it to Sri Gokul Nagi. Champa Bai, the store manager, read it out to Sri Gokul Nagi. Hearing the contents of th- contents, Sri Gokul Nagi said to Champa Bai, "I really must go to Sri Dwarka Ji." Sri Gokul Nagi had already made a vow that he would not travel abroad for the sake of collecting d- donations. 
However, as he contemplated the glory of Sri Dwarakaji and took into account that it had been Chacha Hariwamsji who had written the letter, he set off for Sri Dwarakaji. He had first arrived in Raj Nagar. He stayed a few days there before setting off. He stayed for 13 days in Dwaraka before returning to Raj Nagar, where he stayed with Chacha Hariwamsji before returning to Gokul. Sri Gokul Naji left Chacha Ji there and came back to Gokul. After quite some days, Chashaji also came back to Gokul. He gave the wealth he had gathered to Sri Giridaji and went to have the holy sight of Sri Naji. After having Sri Naji's sight upon Sri Giridaji, Chashaji asked the temple priest Ram Dasji, Oh Ram Dasji, do you have any news? Ram Dasji replied, The only news that I could give you would be that which he gave us before leaving. However, we now have this one son, Sri Gokul Naji. That is all that Ram Dasji said to Chachaji, but Ram Dasji did then ask Chachaji, What news do you have? Chachaji replied, O oh, Ram Dasji, at the moment I am reading the five chapters, Panchadhyay. He meant that when Sri Gosaiji was present, they would read one verse, and Sri Gosaiji would explain this meaning. They had remained fully engrossed in this for days and days. Now the time had come when such reading was impossible. This time had, dis- this time had disappeared with- along with Sri Gosaiji. Part 14. Once Sri Gokulnaji and his brother Sri Gokulnaji were discussing texts between themselves. At that very time, Hari Wamsji came into the betak in order to have the sight of Sri Gokulnaji. Chashaji bowed low in respect to both of them and piped up. What were you two reading about? Now please put the book away. Both the brothers respected Chashaji's words as instructions. From the next day onwards... Sri Gokunaji and Sri Ganeshamji only read Sri Acharyaji's commentary on the Srimad Bhagavatam, the Sri Subodhini and Sri Gosaiji's Tippani. They would also sit with Hari Vamsji to hear these words. They were thus always immersed in the nectar of the Lord's pastimes and constantly contemplated their inner meanings. If they did not understand a certain matter, then Sri Ganeshamji would go to Sri Giridharji and ask him. The first thing that Sri Ganeshamji said to Giridharji, Sri Giridharji was, O oh Babaji, elder brother, he is looking at us and he is speaking to us. Sri Giridharji then burst into tears. Remembrance of his beloved grandfather filled his heart. He lost consciousness of his body for nearly two hours. Then he sat Sri Ganeshamji down in his lap and began to kiss his face, saying, Could you see him? Then Sri Ganeshamji said to Sri Gurdjaji, Our grandfather Sri Vallabh always sees. Hearing these words, Sri Gurdjaji was very happy with Sri Ganeshamji. After this, whenever Sri Ganeshamji had a question, he would go to Sri Gurdjaji, who would give him the answer. He would instruct, Apart from Sri Vallabh, who truly sees? Sri Gokulnaji would tell him tell all this to Hari Vamsji when they were alone. And again one time, Sri Balakrishnaji heard Sri Giridharji's words. One day when they were discussing the scriptures, Sri Balakrishnaji came there to Sri Gokulnaji. Sri Balakrishnaji said to Sri Gokulnaji, O Sri Vallabh, please read the Sri, Bo- Sri Subodhini to me. Sri Gokulnaji answered, O Dada, elder brother, you are older than me. How can I teach my elder? Then Sri Balakrishnaji said to Sri Gokulnaji, This presents no obstacle. Please do these readings to me. After that, Sri Shobha Betiji became the chief listener, and Sri Balakrishnaji and Sri Ganeshamji sat in a quiet place and listened to Sri Gokulnaji as he read. Two Vaishnavas found out about that place, Chashavamsi and Nihal, Ch- Nihal Chandabai. Sri Gokulnaji sat in his betak and read and spoke to this whole group of people. Nilhal Chandabai was allowed to be there because he had previously listened to Krishna Bhatt. Krishna Bhatt, Hari Vamsji and Nihal Chandabai had all three listened to Sri Gosaiji and thereafter discussed between themselves. They were always full of the bliss of such readings and discussions and this is how Nihal Chandabai was let in on the, on the, let in on the say-so of Hari Vamsji. Sri Gokulnaji blessed all of these people with these spoken teachings. After Sri Gosaiji, Hari Wamsji took up permanent residence in Gokul. He would constantly hear the Sri Subodhini from Sri Gokul Naji and was therefore totally blessed with the nectar of the accounts of the divine pastimes. In this way, Chacha Hari Wamsji was a recipient of Sri Gosaiji's great grace. Thus concludes Varta 3, the story of Chacha Hari Wamsji, although truly his story has no end. So we conclude the reading for today and we'll continue tomorrow with Vartha 4, the story of Murari Das. Shri Vallabhadi Shri Ki Jai, Shri Gosai Ji Ki Jai, Sabvaishnavan Kujai Shri Krishna, Jai Jai Shri Radhe.